This video is about replacing the indicator light bulbs with LEDs in a Biomaster 8000. For more information, please visit my blog at biolover.blogspot.com or go to my website at www.biolover.com. This Biomaster 8000 needed a new light bulb in the filters indicator, that's this one. Now these light bulbs are difficult to find and LEDs are a much more reliable replacement. So I set out to replace all the light bulbs in this Biomaster with LEDs. Here's what I did. I connected two red LEDs in series with a current limiting resistor. In this case this is 47 ohm. The LEDs have a turn on voltage of 2 volts and the voltage that's applied to the light bulbs is about 5 volts so to limit the current through these LEDs to 20 milliamps I needed to use about 50 ohms so I put in uh, 47. It is important to use two LEDs because of the directed emission of the LED bulbs. A homogeneous illumination of the light bulb compartments can only be achieved if one uses two LEDs. This here shows the relevant part of the circuit diagram. We have the four indicator light bulbs, mono, manual, filters and clipping. Each of these light bulbs is driven by a NPN Darlington, an MPSA13. By pulling the base up, the Darlington goes on and then a current is flowing through the light bulb and the light bulb turns on. These light bulbs were replaced with these assemblies from two LEDs in series with the 47 ohm current limiting resistor. The LEDs I use are standard 15 millicandela, 2 volts, 20 milliamps uh, from Newark. Here is the stock number in case you want to reproduce this exactly. An interesting feature of the circuit are these four resistors that I marked red. They pass a small current through the light bulbs even if the Darlingtons are off. It is not entirely clear to me why they put these resistors into this circuit. They don't seem to have any obvious benefit to the functionality of turning on and off the light bulbs. In the case of the LEDs, because they already emit light even at very small currents, if you think of it, if you put 47 and 200 20 ohms in, in series, then the current will be about 4 milliamps through this assembly instead of 20. And what that means is that when the Darlington turns on and off, the LED simply goes from a bright to a dim state, but it doesn't really turn off. And so I had to remove these four resistors in order to make sure that the LEDs would really turn off when the Darlingtons are off. An interesting question was whether removing R40 would affect the delay circuits for the clipping lights. The purpose of this circuit is to make sure that one can notice the clipping light come on even if the actual clipping only occurs during a very brief moment. If you look at this circuit, it really shouldn't make a difference if R40 is removed because the delay function is caused by uh, C11 which is either at 5 volts or it is at ground. So when the light is on the Darlington is on and that means the this point here is at ground. Now when that happens then for a brief moment there is a current flowing through this leg of the circuit and that means that the voltage across R42 increases and that pushes the base of TR22 down so it turns off and that means that the voltage at this point goes up and so it can pull up the base of the Darlington even if the voltage coming from the clipping circuit goes off again. Now when the capacitor is charged again then the current stops and that turns the transistor on and then this here gets pulled down to ground and so this also uh, turns off the Darlington base. So based on the size of the capacitor the uh, light bulb stays on for a certain amount of time. 
Now the 220 resistor in comparison to this here going completely conductive only passes a very small current and so removing it shouldn't really make a difference in the charging or decharging of this capacitor. I will demonstrate at the end of this video that the clipping light still works properly even if R40 is removed. Here I'm showing one of my assemblies in comparison with an original light bulb. This here is the filters bulb cabinet where I replaced the broken light bulb with the LEDs and this here is the mono light that still has the original light bulb in there. Now I wanted to test whether the clipping performs similarly with the light bulb and with the LEDs. So I chose a strong radio station, 103.5, which comes in at about 7 to 8 on the signal strength meter. All three Biomasters that I have in the house, they show clipping at around a volume of 5 with this radio station. So we see now what happens when I crank up the volume. So here 5 and the clipping light is on. And I go below 5 and it turns off again. This shows the same test after replacing the light bulb with the LEDs. So as I crank up the volume here at around 5, the clipping light comes on and then it goes off again when I go below. Here you see all four indicators on and as you can see all the uh, fields are illuminated very homogeneously. So it seems with the LEDs one can replace the light bulbs very well. This concludes my video replacing the indicator light bulbs with LEDs in a Biomaster 8000. Thanks for watching.